to the Real Estate Scripts Podcast, the show that helps you know what to say when you're talking to buyers and sellers so that you can close more deals and earn more money. I'm Darren Tunstall, a real estate professional, coach, and number one best-selling author. Let's get into this. Hey there, welcome to Real Estate Scripts Podcast. In today's episode titled Explaining Real Estate Agency Relationship to the Seller, we're going to chat about a crucial aspect of working in real estate. When you're talking to your client, it's super important to clarify the kind of agency relationship you'll have with them. So if you're looking to up your game in explaining this agency relationship to your clients, then stick around. We've got some practical tips and insights coming your way right here on the Real Estate Scripts podcast. As a reminder, the purpose of Scripts and Dialogues is to come, learn, practice, and be prepared to fail forward. This is where we make mistakes and help each other out, but we're mostly interested in seeing how we can get better. First, we read through the script word for word, and then we go back and put it into our own natural tone, style, and phrasing. You won't know what to say until you go through the script. So with that said, many people will say, that's not how I sound. And I totally get it. That's not how you sound. But that is the reason why we practice every day so that the script becomes you and in your own voice. So read it word for word first, then go back and put it into your own natural tone, style, and phrasing. And I think it'll work out. All right. Is everybody ready to get started? Okay. So today we're going to go over... The script explaining real estate agency relationship to the seller. This is a slightly different script. I'll go ahead and set set it up real quick before we break out. And um, I'll tell you a little bit how this script came about. So here it is. To set the stage, when you enter into a discussion with a seller regarding a real estate transaction, you should explain what type of agency relationship or representation you have with them in the transaction. You do this by reviewing the disclosure regarding the real estate agency relationship with your client and you represent them with integrity, honesty, and loyalty. The requirements are strong communication skills, active listening ability, empathy and interpersonal skills, knowledge of residential listing paperwork. The intention is simply to explain the real estate agency relationship to the seller. So the way that this came about was this is something that you should be doing as a real estate agent. You know, when you send them your seller packet or the buyer packet, they're getting it in there and you should really be reviewing it with them. So this script is somewhat laid out using some of the exact specific terms and verbiage that's in the, um, in the agency relationship document itself. It's it. I've I've kind of converted it a little bit into a script format and a dialogue format, but that's the purpose because really we need to be having that conversation. Here's how our relationship works. Is that is that uh, is that pretty clear? Yeah. Okay. All right, Javon, Debbie, Debbie, did you did you get it up? Okay. Um. Yeah. It's it's the one that's uh, preparing the seller. Preparing the seller, explaining okay. real estate agency relationship to the seller. Yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, okay. let's let's uh, let's have Debbie be the agent first, and then we'll reverse roles and see how that goes. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Jamon, have you um, had a chance to review the paperwork to be signed? Uh, I have not reviewed it, Debbie. I haven't had a chance to get around to it. Okay, well, let's talk about what a real estate agency relationship means. Um, it means with your consent, I can act as your agent. I am not the buyer's agent. I have the following affirmative obligations to you and all m- my buyers, and that is a fiduciary duty of utmost care, integrity, honesty, and loyalty. Does that make sense? Okay, so that that means you really you you really focused in on helping me, dedicated to helping me. Yeah, it does. It really does. Yes, yes. <laughs> what your needs um, are are my main goal. So, 
I will exercise reasonable skills and care in my performance and duties. I promise to be honest, fair, and act in good faith. I also have a duty to disclose all facts known that may materially affect the value or desirability of the property that are not known. Is that clear? That's clear. So now it is possible that a buyer that I represent may like your home. In this case, I will represent you and the buyer, but only with the knowledge and consent from you both. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll let you know if this becomes the case. And if it does, you should know that as a dual agent, I will not disclose to the other party confidential information. This includes financial positions, motivations, bargaining positions, or other personal information that may impact the price, including your willingness to accept a price less than the list price. Um, or, or my buyer's willingness to pay a price greater than the listing price. I can only share this information with both parties' consent. Does that sound reasonable? It does, very reasonable. Okay, so my duty as your agent in a real estate transaction, do not relieve you or the buyer from the responsibility to protect your own interests. You should carefully read all agreements to assure that they adequately express your understanding of the transaction. I'm qualified to advise about real estate if legal or tax advice is desired. You should consult a competent professional. Um, you know, I'm not a lawyer. So uh, well, you have the duty to exercise reasonable care to protect yourself, including as to those facts about the property which are known to you or with your with your diligent attention and observation. Does that sound reasonable? It does. It sounds like a lot, but it does sound reasonable though. <laughs> okay. Well, I do strongly recommend obtaining tax advice from a competent professional because the federal and state tax consequences of a transaction can be complex and subject to change. Have I clarified things for you regarding the real estate agency relationship? Uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty clear about it. Okay, well, good. So then we'll move on with this process, and I just need you to sign the paperwork. Awesome. So at this point, you've gone through the agency relationship, and now because you're literally going through the documentation, this is just one of those documents that you have to review with the client. You know, but it's one of the most important documents that you have to review. Right. right. Um, so Jamon, let's reverse roles here. And I know this is an awkward type of a script, but remember, you are literally reviewing some of these things word for word in what's in the document itself. Right. So that's it's just kind of in a dialogue format here. So Okay. Let's go for it whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh all right. Hey, Debbie, um, have, you, have you had a chance to review the paperwork uh, to be signed? Oh, no, no. Um, yesterday was really hectic, so I, have, I haven't even opened it up, to be honest. Totally understood. I had a real busy day yesterday as well. Well, let's talk about what a real estate agency relationship means. Now, this is with your consent. I can act as your agent. Now, I'm not the buyer's agent. I have the following affirmative obligations to you now, and all my buyers, and that is a fiduciary duty of utmost care, integrity, honesty, and loyalty. Does that make sense? Oh, yes, it, it does. Okay, good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll also exercise reasonable skills and care in my performance and duties. Now, I promise to be honest, fair, and act in good faith. And I also have a duty to disclose all facts known that may materially affect the value or desirability of the property that are not known. Now, is that clear? Yes. Okay, good. Good. Now, is it possible that a buyer, now it, it, now it is possible, Debbie, that a, a buyer that I represent may like your home. Now, in that case, I'll represent you and the buyer, but only with the knowledge and consent from both of you. 
Then okay. Would, is that all right with you? Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, now, now I'll let you know if this case should ever occur. Now, if it does, you should know that as a dual agent, I will not disclose to the other party confidential information. This includes financial positions, motivations, bargaining positions, or other personal information that may impact the price. Now, including your willingness to accept the price less than the listing price or my buyer's willingness to pay a price greater than the listing price. Now, I can only share this information with both parties' consent. So now, now does that sound reasonable to you? Uh, yes. Well, I get a break in the commission. Well, yeah. we, that's, that's definitely negotiable. It all depends on how much I do, you know, so but we can definitely talk about that. It's not out the park. OK. OK. Well, yeah, if that should occur, we could address it then. That makes okay. sense. All right. So now uh, now we'll also exercise reasonable skills uh, and care of my performance and duties. Now, I promise to be honest, fair, act in good faith. Now, I also have a duty to disclose all facts known that may materially affect the value or desirability of the property that are not known. Now, is that clear? Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Now, uh, it is possible that a buyer... Oh, did I go all the way back? Oh, I did. <laughs> all right. Now, my duties as your agent, my duties as your agent in the real estate transaction do not relieve you or the buyer from responsibility to protect your own interests. You should carefully read all the agreements, Debbie, and uh, just to ensure that you have adequately expressed your understanding of the transaction, I am qualified to advise about real estate. Now, when we start talking about legal or tax advice, there's desire, you should consult with a competent professional. You have the duty to exercise reasonable care to protect yourself, including as to those facts about the property which are known to you or within your diligent attention and observation. Now, does that sound reasonable? Yes. Okay, good. Now, I, I really strongly recommend, Debbie, Debbie um, obtaining tax advice from a competent professional because federal and state tax consequences of a transaction could be complex and subject to change. Uh, now, have I clarified things for you regarding the real estate agency relationship? Uh, yes. Awesome, awesome. Perfect. So, uh, so let's go ahead and let's move on. Let's get these papers signed and get the ball rolling. Sounds good. All right. All right. Javon, how did you feel about that? It's a lot. It's a lot of information. It's a lot of information. But uh, I think the flow of it, man, it, the flow of it makes sense. And I think it'd be, it, uh, it makes sense on how to explain it to, to, the, uh, to the client. So, but uh, no, I feel, it felt good. Uh, yeah. And, and the point is, this is a script to practice and get comfortable with, you right. know, eventually at some point, right. When you have the paperwork and the client in front of you, then you're going to be reviewing each section. Here's what this says. Here's what that says. Here's what this says, because this particular script is literally word for word what's in that document. Right. And, and it's such a crucial document that a lot of people just skip over it. And it's my thoughts and feelings that you should be reviewing the document so that you know what's in it. So like I said earlier, from a script perspective, I was like, well, what the heck? Let's just turn it into a script. So, I so, should. so some of these words in here are not my words. These are what's in our legal documents that we have to present to our clients. Got it. Got it. So th this would be along with the listing agreement then, all of it. Absolutely. Actually, it's in the buyer's packet. When people are making offers, when you do a purchase <laughs> agreement, it's in there. And it's in here. And when we come back together as a group, we'll talk about some of these specific things to a certain extent, because, you know, whoever you are listening, we want to make sure that you're also uh, abiding by the your own state laws, because we have multiple people who are listening from multiple states. So state laws might change from, you know, state line to state line. And then you're also your broker as well, at least for our case in California. This is what um, agency the the agency disclosure agreement um, is for us. I can't imagine it being too much different anywhere else, but if it is, you have to be aware of your own 
of your own legal documentation. But to lead with integrity, knowing and not sharing motivation, certain motivations, and we'll talk about what some of that stuff means later on. Um, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of stuff in there that you may or may not know what you can and can't do sometimes. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. So anyways, um, does anybody want to try it again and maybe put it in their own words? Yeah, I can. Okay. So Jamon, um, you know, I have all the paperwork here and it's going to seem like a lot because there's so many pages in the listing agreement, but I want to make sure that you understand um, what our real estate agency relationship means. Okay. Um, so what I can tell you is that as your listing agent, I represent you and your wants and needs. And I'm not at this point, the buyer's agent. I have the following affirmative obligations to you and all my buyers, and that is a fiduciary duty of utmost care, integrity, honesty, and loyalty. So basically, I'm here for you and and what, you know, to guide you. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that sounds very reassuring. Thank you. And, you know, I think we already have a really good uh, relationship um, and we are communicating great. Um, and I know, you know, I'll be honest, fair and act in good faith because that's why I became a realtor in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a duty to disclose all known facts to you materially affecting the value or desirability of your property that are not known. Does that make sense? OK, yeah, that's that's pretty clear. So. Yeah. The only way, so say I did an open house for you and someone came in off the street that hasn't been represented and wanted me to act as their realtor. Um, that could mean that I would act as a dual agent and I would not only represent you, but I would represent the buyer also. Um, and But only with consent from both sides. Does that make sense? It does. Do you think that's likely to happen? Will that is that does that happen often? Um, usually only if someone just happens to come into an open house, you know, driving down the street and they want to look at a house and they haven't even thought about really starting to look. Yeah, it could happen. Okay. Um, but you know, of course, that hasn't occurred, and I'll, you'll be the first to know if it should. And I just want you to keep in mind that everything is still strictly confidential on both sides. Okay. So that would include any monetary positions, motivations, uh, negotiations, um, or personal information that may impact the price, um, including your willingness. I would never, for, say, for example, say, well, I know my, you know, my listing, uh, uh, my seller would go down about 10,000, something to that nature. I would never disclose anything like that. Okay. So basically okay. I would, um, you know, keep everything confidential on both sides. Does that sound reasonable? That's very reasonable. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. Well, and my duties as your agent in real estate is in real estate is in real estate transactions. Um, and you still need to do your due diligence to make sure that all agreement to read everything and make sure you understand every part of the transaction. Um, my forte is in real estate. So I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a tax advisor. So you should consult with an expert in those fields if need be. So um, does that make sense to you? It does. It does. Okay. Well, I do strongly recommend obtaining especially tax advice uh, from a professional because the federal and state tax consequences on a transaction can be complex um, and subject to change. You know, especially you're buying another house and the house that you're buying is 
quite a bit less than the one you're selling. So you really do need clarification regarding, um, you know, uh, tax advice. So does that make sense? It does. It really does. Uh, All right. Let's go okay. ahead and stop it there. We're going to switch over to the main room. Okay. All right. So how did that go for everyone? Nathan did really well. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's good. Good. I think Javon, Javon is a I don't think I did professional. <laughs> you smooth. You got that smooth, smooth touch. Flows. Well, that, that's, <laughs> why, that's why we're here, though. That's why we're here. We're here to practice. So one thing I forgot to mention in the very beginning is that this is preparing the seller. And again, going over the script, you know, I was explaining to Debbie and, and Jamon earlier that these are not my words that I wrote. I just turned them into a script and dialogue format. But these are actually words from the agency disclosure agreement. And these are things that we should be actually reviewing with our clients as we have that discussion before they sign all the documentation, because you want them to know what your relationship is going to be. You want them to know what you're going to do, what you're not going to do, and what you can't do for that matter. Um, I mean, when, when you have a listing and a buyer's agent calls you and says, how much is your seller willing to take? The only thing that you could say is- Highest you know, and best. The, the highest and the best. Currently it's offered at. You yeah. know, and vice versa, you know, how much is, how much is your, you know, how much is your seller, your buyer willing to come up? And if you divulge that information, then you're acting outside of your duties. Right. Learning what the motivation is, even, even the question, why is your client moving? Why are they selling their house? If you give an answer, you're giving them the reason why they're motivated to sell. Right. Yeah, like the neighbors are horrible. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, they're they're trying to move, so I can offer less. Yeah. Right. Um, unless you have consent by both parties to divulge that information, then it's then you're able to do that. Um, anyways, in preparing the seller to to work with you, they need to know that you're going to represent them. And if you also bring a buyer that you may represent the buyer as well. Otherwise, and you're not an attorney and you're not a CPA. So if you need legal or tax advice, go out and hire an attorney and a CPA. Anything else to add to this? No, I think that's, I think it's really good though. Because, uh, uh, I mean, you, you basically, uh, you're giving the seller like, you know, like, like comfortability, like they, they, they be, that they, they should be comfortable after that. Like if you run it all down, cause that's a lot, it's a lot, a lot to understand. It know? is. It is. Yeah. And they like it that it goes over material facts, right? If there's something about your house, we need to be yeah. open about that. Isn't that can't true? hide anything. Right. But how many clients actually will? Right. Yeah, like, we'll gloss over. Know, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, right. You're absolutely, they'll just gloss over it and not give you the full details because yeah. for some reason, sometimes they seem to think that, oh, that's just nothing. You know, it's, it's, it's okay. And if you don't know, then that could come down, you know, come back to bite everyone in, in the butt later on. Right. Um, one thing I want to ask is uh, to kind of, finalize this conversation is how many people have heard their broker in the past say just read the contract <laughs> yeah read the contract dan says that all the time <laughs> mm -hmm. he says that all the time right so your broker might say that as well and they should because and this is this is that way of reading the contract so that you know what's in it in a script format. Mm -hmm. Um tomorrow we're going to go over ongoing service to the buyer. So now we've gotten them to sign, now you're in it and you're going to be you know providing continuous service. So with that said, 
If anybody has anything else to say, now's the time to say it. Otherwise, we're finished. Great practice. Okay. Cool. Bye, guys. See you later. You're all amazing. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. All right. So that's the script. I hope that you found it very useful. To download the script, just go ahead and head over to realestatescriptspodcast.com. There'll be a link there for you to download the script. This podcast is for the purpose of education only, and it does not make any guarantees. We suggest you seek out the help of your broker, coach, or mentor for specific situations. Brought to you by Darren Tunstall at Repros, California DRE number 0185345.